Welcome back to Meet the Ministers. Anastasia, you had the, the opportunity to go to the UK and study 1995 by a British Council Chevening Scholar. What's that all about? What's the, what's the meaning of that? Well, it's a scholarship that was um, it's administered by the British government yeah. and uh, it's quite well regarded um, across the Commonwealth. And uh, they have two people from Queensland who were selected uh, that particular year and I was very, very fortunate to be uh, selected to go and study a Master of Arts at uh, the University of London. Mm -hmm. So I was able to do a couple of British politics subjects at the London School of Economics. Yeah and a couple of other subjects at the uh, University of London. So, fantastic experience uh, and one that I often talk to my high school students and say, look, never did I think in my lifetime growing up in Durack that I would be able to study overseas. And I just say to them that these opportunities are open to you as well. And I dare say it would have exposed you to people from all over the world in that similar, similar vein who'd been selected not Absolutely. just because of their ability, but because it was thought that they could really utilise the opportunity. That's right. And the one thing that did strike me, there were people from all around the world who were studying, at, especially at the London School of Economics, yeah. and you'd have different ideas and people had worked you know, for senators in the US yeah. and different backgrounds. But it was just a, in, an incredible experience just to see uh, the contribution that people uh, would then go back and make to their own communities. Mm. And they were looking at people who would you know, pursue careers into the future. So the British government still uh, keeps in contact with uh, those people who did study over there. Okay. But a fantastic opportunity and one, one that I'll never forget. You keep in touch with your colleagues from that time? I do with some of them and I was actually very fortunate to catch up with a friend of mine who's uh, now an artist in New York uh, a couple of years ago. So it was lovely to catch up with Les. And uh, a few of the Canadians still keep in contact now through, through email. Yeah, so it is, um, it, it's good that continuous to see what they're doing. And does, that, does that help to create a, an interest in the political system worldwide in general? You have an interest in English politics or American politics other than the fact that you're all in the same sort of game. Does it, you look at that from a, I guess, from a, a scholastic bent? Yeah, you look at it from a different point of view. So yeah. when I was studying British politics, the tutor, and usually London School of Economics is known for its uh, left-wing leanings, yeah. the tutor I had um, had actually uh, served under Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. So he was quite conservative yeah. and uh, I was I was labelled the angry young Australian because I was always putting forward uh, our policies as opposed to the policies of the day. I also had the opportunity to work in the Marginal Seats campaign unit for Tony Blair okay. um, on, a, on a volunteer basis and my thesis was actually on marginal seat campaigning. So a very keen interest in um, those sort of aspects of politics, but I think what it brings, it brings to you in the end about studying overseas, it broadens your horizon. It wasn't just about the education, it was about experiencing British culture um, mm. and the, uh, the you know, theatre, uh, cricket, going to all those different things, but also meeting people, and it's those friendships that will just last a lifetime. There'd be plenty of people I could think of who would wear the badge of the angry young Australian <laughs> with a badge of, with, a, with a lot of pride. Yes, well, at the time I was young, so 27, 28, yeah. and uh, I do remember um, uh, standing at Australia House handing out how to vote cards in the 96 election, federal election. Uh, unfortunately, we, uh, we didn't win that election. Yeah. It was the election that Paul Keating lost. Mm. But, uh, yeah, just having that experience, exposing yourself to new ideas, being challenged... And I think bringing that back with me to never accept everything as a, a fait accompli, but to be able to question things and, you know, go down the path to make sure that you are making the right decisions. So I think that does actually help me in my role as minister um, when you're weighing up uh, different decisions, that I will ask the questions, I will make sure that I do have the evidence, I will make sure I get the policy decision right. And, of course, the big thing is that you never know what the new day is going to hold. We've seen that today, how things can change overnight. That's things right. come out of left field and all of a sudden there's a new set of circumstances to deal with. That's right. Yeah, yeah. At that point when you decided to go, OK, it's law, politics, I'm yes. going to go with politics, is that law career still in the back of your mind? Do you have that still in the future for you? Look, I think that's always something I could explore yeah. in the future, but I'm passionate about my job. Yeah. I'm um, passionate about helping people in my community. And I also love my job as being Transport Minister. 
I just think transport has um, ha impacts on everybody and I've actually taken that, um, that role from when I was former disabilities minister where mm. disabilities is all about people. Mm. I've taken uh, those views with me um, now as transport minister that transport is about people. It's about getting people from A to B. It's about providing the best transport system that we can in South East Queensland and it is working and we are leading the way and other states are now looking to us to copy what we're doing. A couple of months out from the election, times are it's getting busier and busier all the time. You're yes. still finding time on the weekends to explore your own interests, theatre, uh, cricket, cricket, all those kind oh, of things. We'll that be we... going to the first test. Oh, you are? Yes, yeah, so yeah. we'll be going on the Saturday. Yeah. Um, look, I did take up a sport just recently, golf, but I ended up with a knee injury. Um, I'm a patron of a local uh, golf club out in my community yeah, okay. and uh, they have a, a, ladies, uh, a ladies training day, so I was involved with that uh, quite a bit. But look, I do think you need to have a balance in your life, you know, yeah. so you do need to make sure that you catch up with family and friends. Uh, the friends I've made at university, I still catch up with regularly, um, especially around Christmas time is mm. always a good time. But you need to make sure that you have that balance and you need to connect with people and listen to what they're saying because otherwise you can just become a little bit insular in your outlook mm. and uh, that's why as Transport Minister I'm out there catching the buses, catching the trains, catching the ferries, listening to what people have to say and let me tell you everybody has an opinion when it comes to transport. Oh absolutely yeah I, I would think golf being the great lever it is it'd be a, a pretty good thing to have going on in the background for a politician because you certainly don't want to get uh, your feet too far off the ground or get caught up in what's going on around you too much. That's right, yep. So I've got to keep, I'll get back into the golf in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> You're only a couple of balls in the rough away from disaster <laughs> after all. Maybe that's a, a fair example of politics. I mean, how do you see it going over the next couple of months? Of course, the election's coming. It's not far away now. We're only almost out of time. That's right. How's it going to go for you? Um, well, I think, you know, we'll continue to work very hard each and every day. The Premier has just made a fantastic education announcement about investing in our children's future. Mm. That is the heart of uh, a Labor government. Mm. Labor always delivers in education. And what she is setting up is a future fund for uh, students into the future the, from the LNG royalties. And uh, look, I just think that's going to kickstart us into the future, which gives people opportunities to study, um, to pursue their training careers, and it is about setting the benchmark and the vision of where we want to see Queensland go into the future. And I think that's going to be the contrast. The contrast is going to be uh, that the Premier has a vision for the future and the opposition, and especially Newman, has no vision, no funding um, policies that are costed. He came out and made a transport announcement just recently, completely uncosted. Where's the money coming from and what services are you going to cut? Well, it wasn't going to be too much about politics, but I thank you for your time anyway. Anastasia <laughs> Palaszczuk, thank you for coming on the program. Good luck. Thank you. You've been watching Meet the Ministers. My name is Sean Bindley. I look forward to joining you again next week.